So I started filming, it was very dark because the blinds were down because when I first set everything up, the sun was out and it's like literally pouring through the window. So it blows out the light. Then I sat down to film and the sun disappeared. So I had to open the blinds and now it's back again. So if this part of the room blows out, that's why. Hi everyone, my name is Steph. This is The Novelty Corner and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a Books Beside My Bed video for you where I wrap up the last seven days worth of reading. This sun coming and going is going to be really irritating. Anyway, moving on. Also, this is your final chance to fill in my channel survey before I close it and start putting together a little bit of a video talking about some of the feedback and how it's going to impact my channel in 2024. So make sure that you have clicked on the link down below if you would like to and sent through some feedback. You can do it totally anonymously. You don't have to leave your name. So feel free to share your thoughts with me in the survey. I'm going to be talking about 11 books today. I do have some review titles that are coming out on the 28th of November as well as a whole stack of things that I read for the Australian Readathon. So let's jump into it. All right so let's talk about the books that I read. So one of the books that I read for review is Our Family Dragon by Rebecca Lim. This is a picture book that's coming out on the 28th and it is a Lunar New Year story and this was just a really gorgeous book about a young boy who is excited about celebrating the upcoming new year, moving from the year of the rabbit to the year of the dragon. It is very much about how people celebrate different holidays, how in particular Lunar New Year is very much a holiday celebration. My gosh, the food on the pages. <laughs> like it's, it's delightful. But he is sort of recounting all of the things that he loves about the Lunar New Year, how he participates and how he wants to participate in the future. He wants to become one of the dragon dancers, but he's waiting for the dragon to arrive on Lunar New Year. And I just loved the narrative in this. There is so much joy and love and celebration in this book. It is really wonderful. And the illustrations are very big and vibrant and I just love that. So I'm really glad I could add this to my Lunar New Year picture book collection. I need more books for Lunar New Year. Also coming out on the 28th, there is Wolf Girl 10 by Ando. This is The Race is On. So this is an ongoing middle grade serial about a world where a government has invaded a country and has taken over and Wolf Girl or Gwen is trying to find her family and trying to right some of the wrongs that have been done. And in this one, she finds herself in a bit of a, not quite a gladiator. Well, she starts out in a gladiator arena, but it's basically a group of teens who are pitted against each other to try and win a competition in order to get a wish, which for many of them is to get their family members back. It's a fairly decent commentary on governments doing what they want, but this one really had a big focus on teamwork. There's always a teamwork element in the Wolf Girl series, but this one very much so had this group of people who've never met each other, who are competitors having to work together to survive and to get back the people that they love. So thank you very much to Alan and Unwin for both of these review copies. I had a great time reading them, especially this one. I love this. Also, both of these would fit the Australian Readathon. You can use the picture book for the free space square or orange on the cover. You could also use Wolf Girl. This is a middle grade title and there is also orange on the cover. Then I read Not My Type by Evie Mitchell or reread it. This is my third reread and I annotated it and there is a vlog which I will leave linked on the screen. So I'm not going to talk about it too much. It is a contemporary romance story. It is very sex positive. It does feature Frankie who is in a wheelchair and she runs a sex positive accessibility podcast and Jay who is a friend of a friend who she turns to for advice on accessible shibari and the two embark on a relationship. Totally forgot about the dinosaurs in the front yard in this book and that just absolutely made my weekend when I read it. But honestly, it is a delightful book. I reread this with the audio and the audio is absolutely fantastic. Evie Mitchell is an Australian author. This is self-published. There's orange on this cover. I had a delightful time. I also read Origins by Alona Andrews. I was actually reading it while I was getting my hair done and I thought, okay, great. It's the last Alona Andrews story that I have to read. It's only a hundred and something pages long. That's perfect for sitting in the hairdresser's chair when I'm going to be up and down and moving around quite a bit. And uh, I started reading it and, you know, I was really enjoying it. I'm like, oh, this is kind of horror-ish. So you have a woman who has her daughter and two other children in the car. They're driving back from some kind of excursion and the kids need to go to the bathroom. So she has to stop at this bed and breakfast that kind of looks creepy and run down and has some very disturbing people inside the B&B. &B. And then they get attacked while they're there. And the mother is mortally wounded and the people who come in to rescue them 
basically make a deal with her that she doesn't really understand at the time because she's nearly dead. In exchange for the safety of the children and her life, she will become a blood donor for one of these mysterious monster creatures that she ha seems to have encountered while in this bed and breakfast. And it turns out she sort of slipped into it, this parallel mirror universe kind of thing. And like many of these paranormal romance sort of stories, her blood is the one thing that can help to keep someone alive. And so she agrees and then wakes up in this totally new world and has to reconcile what she knew about the world and the fact that she's not in her world anymore and that she is now living with these this group of genetically modified humans and then there's some sci-fi elements that come into it but the whole time I was reading it I'm like gee this sounds really familiar what other book have I read that's like this I've read this book before it was in an angel anthology the one that I read for when I was completing my Nalini Singh angels read through <laughs> I've read it before. I actually, I really enjoyed it and I'm kind of disappointed that there's no more stories set in this world because it was very, very intriguing what was set up. But yeah, I can see why they've gone in other directions. I just couldn't believe that I didn't remember that I'd read it. The problem is because I read it in an anthology, I didn't mark it on Goodreads as being read. So that was my second reread for the week, <laughs> unintentionally. I also read Tough Guy by Rachel Reed. This is book three in the Game Changer series. I listened to the audio for this because I could get it through Libby through my local library and I just had an audiobook going during the week while I was doing cooking and cleaning and whatever and I enjoyed it. This is an MM hockey romance series. In this case we have Ryan who is an NHL hockey player. He is a defenseman and an enforcer. He's never really been a fan of being an enforcer. He's good at fighting but he, he, it's not his passion but that's what people expect him to do. And he gets traded from team to team a lot because he doesn't necessarily connect with people on his team a lot because as he's in this enforcer role He's feeling this disconnect between himself and hockey. He used to enjoy playing hockey, but now it's not so much his passion anymore. At the start of the book, he gets traded to Toronto. And while he's out exploring the town, he, he runs into a guy that he used to know, Fabian. So when Ryan was growing up, he was billeted with Fabian's family while at a hockey academy thing, I think. He always really liked Fabian. He thought he was a good guy. Fabian was, you know, an up and coming musician when Ryan first met him. And the two got along great. And despite the fact that Fabian has absolutely no love for sports and in particular hockey because his entire family is obsessed and Fabian doesn't play hockey, he is a musician and they don't really understand that about him. He's really got this negative attitude towards hockey initially. But when Ryan comes back into his life, they reconnect and they start spending time together because Ryan's new in town. So Fabian is showing him around and they're working on a whole lot of things. In particular, this book really deals with Ryan's disconnect from the sport that he plays and that is the big thing that he is working through about whether or not he still has the passion to play it and it's not that he's injured and he can't play the game anymore although he is older and he is suffering from injuries but the fact that his heart isn't in it anymore he also knows that it's likely that he'll just be traded whenever and so he like he's reluctant to make friends but he's sort of forced into a friendship with one of the other players on the team Wyatt who is delightful and forces Ryan to you know be social with him at least. Like there were some really nice elements in it. It wasn't my favorite of the three books I've read in the series so far, no, but I still like the interplay of the characters and the way that Ryan really found himself fitting in with Fabian's friends. Like it was just a nice read and it was a nice one to have as an audio just only in the background. Then I read the Season of the Vampire trilogy set within the Fae Guardian universe by Lana Pahercek. The first book, which is book four in the overall series, but book one in the Season of the Vampire is The Secrets in Shadow and Blood. So this trilogy follows three women who have also awakened in the time of the Fae Gardens, which is set in the future. I've talked about this before. I'll leave a link to the last books beside my bed video where I tried to explain this world. And these three women actually woke up about six years before the heroines in the previous trilogy. So they've been in this world for a lot longer. They've had to adapt to survive. So this is Violet's book. And when Violet first wakes up, she is being held captive with a couple of other women and they are being attacked and fed on by vampires. And Violet manifests her fae abilities at this time. The three women band together, they give themselves fae names in order to blend in to society. They think they're gonna stick together, but they realize that they really can't and they have to go their separate ways. And so Violet goes off and she is really dealing with the trauma of initially being attacked by vampires and she has become a vampire slayer. She hunts and kills vampires. She moves from town to town and she kind of does so indiscriminately because she has had that negative experience. Whereas as we come to realize, most vampires do not feed indiscriminately and they do have control, 
but because of her first her first experience that she just doesn't ask questions. And it turns out that her faded mate is Indigo, who is one of the vampire guardians in this world. And as a member of the Fae Guardians, he is starting to investigate the behavior of the Unseelie Queen, who is also a vampire and the ruler of half of the land. And the Guardians believe that she is beginning to behave in a very weird way. And so they are trying to find out what's going on. And the Unseelie Queen is trying to gather the women from this series because they were born in our current day and had jobs like Violet was a nuclear physicist. And so they believe that the Queen is trying to build a weapon and so they need these women. So they're trying to track them down. And that is how Indigo and Violet's path cross. And they are trying to figure out exactly what the Queen is doing once Violet gets over the fact that Indigo is a vampire. So it's kind of like a hate to love story slash enemies to love story initially with magic. Am I succinct in reviewing these stories? No, because there's a lot that goes on in them. Also, you can't read them as standalones, but you can talk about them as standalones because they all have their very dis own distinct plot, but it makes far more sense to read them in order. Book five in the Fae Guardian series and book two in the Season of the Vampire series is A Labyrinth of Fangs and Thorns. This one is the story of Peaches and Haze. This one actually, the story runs parallel to this book because Peaches is the second woman in this group of three and she is kind of the I don't want to say well I don't I think timid is the wrong word but she of the three she is the more timid of them she's not the fighter of the group and she has found herself caught up by the Unseelie Queen and so she's living in the palace and she's basically the Unseelie Queen's pet and personal blood source because these women's blood is you know magical to these vampires it's always about the blood anyway she is living in the court she is not a captive but she's also not free to just do whatever she wants and Hayes who is one of Indigo's compatriots ends up hearing that there is this weird pixie who has some knowledge about things going on because Peaches has been glamoured to look like a pixie and not like a human when he gets there he realizes who she is and they are still trying to uncover the plot of the Unseelie Queen. This is all unfolding at the same time and end up getting caught up in sort of the games of the court. And then they really are held captive and then used against the Fae Guardians. This one was really interesting. And this one reminded me the most of say Laurel K. Hamilton's Mary Gentry series, just in terms of how much time we spent in the Unseelie court and sort of the types of characters we met. It's not the same as the book. It just had very similar elements that I'm like, oh yes, this, I, it reminded me of when I first read that. So you have the red caps and you have all of the dark fae and the political games and the queen who will stop at nothing to get what she wants. I will say like all of these books, content warnings for violence, blood, gore, general sort of fantasy romance shenanigans. But in this one, you also have a vampire orgy. You have a scene where the heroine has to drink a very potent drink. So she's essentially drugged for a scene. She knows that she takes the drink but she also doesn't really have a choice in taking it and the hero works really hard not to take advantage of her in that state he doesn't he actually turns her down i'm pretty sure there is also mention of the death of a child which is historical and off page in this book and yeah it was very intriguing because while it necessarily didn't necessarily move us forward heaps in time from the first book we did get a lot more information so we suddenly know and have a bit more insight into what is going on with the Queen. And then the final book in the Season of the Vampire trilogy and book six in the Fae Guardian series overall is A Symphony of Savage Hearts. This one is the third vampire member of the Fae Guardians, Shade, who is kind of like the leader of the three of them. And in the previous book, he was forced to feed off one of the humans. And so now he is unable to feed off anything else because regular blood just doesn't work for him anymore and so he needs to find his fated mate who is Silver who is kind of like the leader of these three women. She was the one who came up with a plan, figured out very quickly that they needed to separate in order to survive and put in place ways to keep them safe. She has also found herself living in the human camp and is very anti-fae and has basically trained to kill the fae. And this is a bit of a problem when she runs into Shade, who is a vampire and recognizes her immediately as his fated mate. So this is very much enemies to lovers for the first part of the book. And then Silver begins to see that while not all humans are bad, there are elements in the human leadership that are definitely doing some shady things. And she's forced to confront that, particularly when they kidnap a child. So there is kidnapping of a child in the book so be aware of that going into it and this book does 
end off on a bit of a cliffhanger in terms of that storyline because the next and I would imagine it's going to be addressed in the next trilogy which is the Elf trilogy which I'm going to be reading this week. This one does have panic attack representation it also talks a lot about poverty and growing up and or living in poverty. After that I read Home for the Holidays by Lee Jacko. This is the next Holly Nights novella. This one is a Thanksgiving story. It is a step-sibling romance which is not something I ever thought I would read but I read it because it's Lee Jacko. This isn't my favourite novella in the series. We have Elliot and Adelina who when they were in high school were very attracted to each other. They never did anything about it and right before Elliot was going to make a move on Adelina they realised that their parents were dating and then they got married. And so this was like right at the tail end of high school. And so they've gone for eight years as step siblings and just not necessarily had the best relationship as a result of it because they both have unresolved feelings they've never been able to act on it because they're family and this Thanksgiving is their last Thanksgiving as a family because their parents are separating and as it so happens they end up alone in a forced proximity situation on Thanksgiving night and it's finally time for them to admit a few truths to themselves. So this was it was interesting and I liked the dynamics and the interplay but this is a book that I probably feel probably needed to be a little bit longer in order to develop that connection between the two of them but also I probably wouldn't have read it if it was longer. Lee Jacko's writing is great. It's not a bad book it's just maybe not my personal preferences in a romance book. Then I read Love and Other Scores by Abra Pressler. This was a review copy that was sent to me unsolicited, unsolicited maybe from I can't remember if I requested I don't think I requested it. This is from Macmillan Australia and I had an utterly delightful time reading this book. This is a contemporary MM romance set in Australia during the Australian Open. Gabriel is a French tennis player. He is playing in the Australian Open. He's been a pro tennis player for years. He is fairly well known but he's starting to feel the pressure of sort of being closeted and being well known and constantly travelling to places but never really getting to see them and so on his first night in town he ends up sort of slipping his father who is his coach and his manager and just sort of going out on the town and ends up at this bar where he meets Noah. Noah is a bartender, he's also a bit of a musician, he can play the piano and the, you know making this the second book I've read this week where you have a queer romance with a sports player and a musician. Clearly that's a thing. Anyway they hit it off and Noah offers to show Gabriel around town while he's in Melbourne. Gabriel doesn't reveal that he's a tennis player. Noah has absolutely no idea who he who he is. Gabriel has sort of said he's in town, he's in international relations because he, for the first time someone doesn't recognize him and just treats him as a normal person and he really likes that but this does come back to bite him later on. Obviously they begin to spend time together, their relationship develops, both of them are trying to keep their relationship private and out of the media for many reasons. Gabriel because he is not out publicly yet and he's not sure what the fallout of that will be while he is playing in a major tournament and Noah because his family has a history of domestic violence and he and his mother are hiding from their father and so he doesn't want anything to get out onto social media or in the public eye about him because he's like he's he's afraid. This was just adorable like it was really fun it was so casually queer the characters in here are just utterly delightful. There is one point where they end up at a drag bar and the entire scene is just gorgeous. There are some really lovely friendships in here and people who are looking out for both of these characters and want to know that they're safe and happy and I just love that and it's set in Australia. It was really really enjoyable. And then the final book that I read this week was also set in Australia and it was another review copy. This is also from Alan Unwin. This is Kill Your Husbands by Jack Heath. This is a crime book. There are romance elements in this story but it is not a romance. It is 100% a crime fiction story and a really interesting one. So I actually have a vlog for this coming out so I'm not going to spend heaps of time unpacking this except to say that I really really enjoyed it and that I found the concept really cool. So it's about three couples who go on a couples weekend into the mountains. There's no phone reception up there and somehow the idea of couple swapping comes up over the weekend and it's going to be done anonymously and it's going to be a consequence free thing until one of the husbands ends up dead and then we have to unravel exactly what happened as more people begin dying and the person who's trying to figure it out is Kira who is an indigenous police detective living in this small town and she and her girlfriend Elise who was one of the main characters in Kill Your Brother also by Jack Heath end up staying at this murder house over the weekend to try and get into the heads of the killers and to try and figure out exactly what what went wrong. It is a crime novel so content warnings for murder, gore, blood, some truly gross scenes in terms of discovering dead bodies. This was great, I really enjoyed it. I think I, f I think 
I had suspicions about who was responsible about halfway through the book and I think it's a very me thing about why I picked up on that but or why I had that suspicion but it didn't stop my enjoyment of the book because there are enough twists and turns that I was questioning myself and I enjoy that so well done Jackie this is great the vlog is coming on Wednesday if you're interested in more information about this book and in particular my immediate thoughts after reading it. Also I listened to the audio of this it is an audible original with multiple narrators so you can definitely go and listen to that. I listened to it with the book so I did notice a slight a couple of slight differences in terms of the audio and the book but nothing significant to the plot. This is out on the 28th of November but the audio is out now so if you're interested you can get it straight away. And I just realized I didn't talk about any of the prompts that these books would fit so oh I talked about not my type. The Fey Guardian series would fit indie published book you could use a few free square for romance or for these ones are illustrated books or whatever you wanted to do. Love and Other Scores is set in Australia. It's set during summer so it's a hot setting. It is queer. It is an Australian author and it has orange on the cover. And Kill Your Husbands would fit the set in Australia prompt. But you could also use it for free space for a crime book if you wanted to. All right so those are the books that I have read this week in the comments. I would love to know if you have read any of them and what your thoughts are or if you would like to let me know what you have been reading and enjoying feel free to talk about that down below as well. If you would like to let me know that you're here but you don't want to leave a comment feel free to leave a tennis ball emoji down below otherwise I hope that wherever you are in the world you're staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.